This episode of Deep Dive Unknown could be... Our best yet. Time travel. You hear that phrase, and, well, your mind jumps straight to movies. Maybe some heavy physics debates. Right. It's such a captivating idea. But while hopping back to see the dinosaurs is still, you know, pure fiction territory for now, uh. the sources we're digging into today show something pretty amazing. Traveling to the future. That's actually real. It's baked into how the universe works. Yeah, exactly. Forget the flux capacitors and flashy gadgets. Our mission here in this deep dive is to really unpack the actual science that makes future time travel possible. A documented thing, even. All based on the physics in this material we have. That's it. We're going to get into Einstein's theories, which are always a bit mind-bending, uh, talk about time dilation, and even touch on wormholes, the theoretical side. But keeping it grounded in real science. Always. Based on what the science currently understands. Okay, let's dive in then. Time dilation. That's central, isn't it? The source material jumps right into Einstein's special relativity. It does. And it's fundamental. Special relativity just blew up the old idea that time is like this universal clock ticking the same for everyone, everywhere. Which feels totally normal in our everyday lives, right? Hey. That time is constant. It does. But Einstein showed, nope, time is relative. It depends on how fast you're moving compared to someone else. If you speed up, your time slows down relative to a stationary observer. So it's not just ticking slower, it's actually stretching. Sort of, yeah. Your experience of time changes relative to others. It was a huge shift from Newton's absolute time. And this isn't just math on a blackboard. The text points to astronauts. That's a real world check. Absolutely. Right? Because they're whipping around the Earth really fast, their time is slightly different from ours. Okay, tell me more about that. Well, the material mentions cosmonaut Gennady Padalka. This guy spent, get this, 879 days in orbit. Wow, that's a long time. It is. And he was moving at roughly 27,358 kilometers per hour. So when he came back, yeah, he'd aged just a tiny bit less than everyone on Earth, about 144th of a second less. Whoa, so he literally traveled 144th of a second into the future. In a very real physical sense, yes. It's minuscule, obviously, but it happened. It proves the principle. That is wild, just a tiny nudge forward. But the source says this effect gets way bigger the closer you get to light speed. Oh, massively bigger. The effect is there even on plane, like you mentioned earlier, but it's so small you'd never notice. So technically, every time I fly, I'm time traveling. A tiny bit. Huh? Technically, yes. Nanoseconds, maybe. But it becomes really significant only at relativistic speeds, speeds close to light speed. And the text gives an extreme example with the Large Hadron Collider. They're pushing particles, protons, incredibly fast. Yeah, to 99.9999999% of the speed of light. Just shy of the absolute limit. And what happens to time for those protons? Okay, this is where it gets really mind-bending. At that speed, the source says, their time runs about 6,900 times slower than ours. 6,900 times slower. So, for every second that passes for the scientists watching, the proton experiences only a tiny fraction of that second. It shows how much time can stretch. That really drives it home. And there's this hypothetical trip too, right, to Kepler-186. Ah, uh, yes, the interstellar travel thought experiment. Kepler-186 is about 580 light years away. Super far. 580 light years. So even at light speed, that's 580 years one way. Exactly. Now imagine a ship that could do 99.99% of light speed. From Earth's point of view, the round trip would take 
Well, a bit more than double 580 years because you're not quite at light speed. So roughly 11 then in 160 years. Over a thousand years? How yeah. could anyone survive that? That's the obvious problem. And that's where time dilation is the um, potential game changer because the ship is moving so fast. Time slows down for the crew inside. Dramatically. The source calculates that for the astronauts on board, that entire 1160 year journey, it would only feel like about 10 years passing for them. 10 years for them. Over 1100 for Earth. Crazy, right. They'd come back, having aged only a decade, to find Earth centuries older. It shows how relative time is, and it's maybe the only way humans could ever travel between stars. Though the source hints, you wouldn't exactly recognize home when you got back. No, you wouldn't. A huge implication. Your entire civilization, everyone you knew, gone. Definitely makes you think about the cost of that kind of acceleration. For sure. Okay, so speed warps time via special relativity. But then the source brings in general relativity and gravity. How does that fit? Right. So Einstein wasn't done. General relativity brings gravity into the mix. He came up with this idea of space-time. Merging space and time together. Exactly. Not separate things, but a single four-dimensional fabric. Three space dimensions, one time dimension, all woven together. And this fabric isn't just a backdrop. It's active. It can stretch. It can warp. And massive things warp it. That's the Gravity Wells idea from the text. You got it. Think of space-time like a trampoline. You put a heavy ball in the middle. It creates a dip. Right. Planets, stars, black holes, they do the same thing to space-time. They create these curves, these dips. And what we feel is gravity is just us following those curves. So gravity isn't really a force pulling things. It's the shape of space-time pushing things along these curves. That's the essence of general relativity, yeah. And here's the key link back to time. This warping of space-time also affects the flow of time itself. Okay, how? The stronger the gravity, the deeper the dip in space-time, the slower time passes. Slower. So time runs slower near a massive object. Yes. And conversely, time runs slightly faster further away from that gravity source. It even happens here on Earth. Time technically ticks a tiny bit faster on a mountaintop than at sea level. Because you're further from the Earth's center of mass. Precisely. The effect is incredibly small for Earth, but it's measurable with atomic clocks. Near a black hole, though, the effect would be immense. Mind. Blown. Okay, so speed slows time. Gravity slows time. It's all connected through this space-time fabric. That's the picture Einstein gave us. Now, building on that warped space-time idea, the source gets even more speculative. Wormholes. Einstein, Rosen, Bridges. This sounds like pure sci-fi. It does lean heavily into theoretical territory, but it actually came out of Einstein's own work on general relativity, specifically studying black holes with another physicist, Nathan Rosen. So what is the theory? Well, they looked at the math describing a black hole, which has this point of infinite density at its center, a singularity. And the equation suggested that the singularity might theoretically connect to another point in space-time. Like a tunnel. Kind of. Maybe even connecting to something called a white hole. A white hole. The source said that's like a black hole in reverse, spitting stuff out. Exactly. It's purely hypothetical. We've never seen one. Mm. But the idea is a black hole entrance connected to a white hole exit could form this bridge, this wormhole, a shortcut through space time. Oh. Some researchers, the text says, even wonder if some black holes might be white holes we just haven't recognized. It's speculative, but yeah, the possibility is entertained in some theoretical circles. So these wormholes these cosmic shortcuts, they'd need seriously warped space-time, right? Like near those supermassive black holes, sag A in our galaxy center. That's where you'd expect the conditions to be most extreme, yes. Powerful gravity is key. But even if they could form, there's a huge stability problem. Ah, oh, the catch. What's the issue? General relativity predicts that any normal matter trying to go through would cause the wormhole's own gravity to make it collapse instantly like faster than the matter could get through. So useless as a tunnel then? Pretty much, according to standard oh. physics. Unless you could prop it open. Wow. Theoretically, with something called exotic negative matter. Negative matter. Okay, now that really sounds like sci-fi. Does that even exist? Good question. It's never been observed. But mathematically, it's not completely ruled out. The idea, the source mentions, is matter with negative mass or negative energy density. It would essentially have anti-gravity properties pushing space-time apart instead of pulling it together. So you'd need this hypothetical stuff just to keep the theoretical tunnel open. Seems like a long shot. It is definitely a major hurdle. But the text points to a fascinating physics discovery from 2017. Something about quantum entanglement. Entanglement. 
that weird quantum connection thing. Yeah, where two particles stay linked no matter how far apart they are. The idea, still very much being explored, is that the strange physics of entanglement might somehow generate the negative energy conditions needed to stabilize a wormhole. Whoa. So the weirdness at the quantum level might solve the giant cosmic engineering problem. It's a potential link people are researching, very cutting-edge stuff. But even if you could stabilize one... There are still more problems, let me guess. Huh. Yes. <laughs> the source is clear. Even if they exist, they might be incredibly unstable anyway. Maybe they pop into existence and vanish instantly or get ripped apart faster than light could cross them. Maybe tiny microscopic ones exist, but nothing we could use. So finding one, stabilizing it, traveling through it, tons of ifs. Massive ifs. And then there are the practicalities, even if you found a stable one. Like just getting there. Exactly. The universe is vast. The text uses the movie Interstellar's example, a wormhole near Saturn. Okay, relatively close in cosmic terms, but still. Still far for us. How long to get to Saturn? Well, New Horizons took nine and a half years to get to Pluto. Saturn's closer, but even a hypothetical fast ship might take, say, four years just to reach the wormhole's location, according to the source. Four years just to get to the entrance. And we don't even have ships like that yet. We don't. And then what happens inside? Can we survive it? Is it one way? Does time pass differently on the other side? Oh, right. The time dilation thing again. You could pop out millennia later or earlier. Potentially, yes. You might arrive instantly from your perspective, but find yourself in a vastly different epoch relative to where you started. Huge unknowns. And the source also just briefly flags the idea of paradoxes, right? Especially with past travel. Yeah, that opens a whole other can of worms, logically speaking. Grandfather paradox, stuff like that. We've mainly focused on future travel, which is more grounded. Right. So let, let's try and sum this up. The big takeaway seems to be going to the future. That's not fiction. Not at all. It's a proven consequence of relativity. Time dilation is real. Astronauts experience it. Particles and accelerators experience it. It happens. Speed and gravity genuinely affect time. The universe allows forward time travel. It does. Slower than we might like at every A speeds, but the principle is solid. It's the shortcuts, the stable, traversable wormholes for FTL or maybe past travel. That's where things get highly theoretical and face massive, maybe impossible challenges right now. Requires stuff we haven't found, doing things we don't know how to do to get through something that might collapse instantly. That about sums up the challenges with wormholes, yeah. Unlocking that would need a revolution in physics, probably. Okay, so we know forward travel happens, and we've got these wild, maybe possible wormhole ideas. It really makes you think. Mm. So for you listening, considering that future travel is real and these other possibilities are out there, what future era, if any, would you want to see? What answers would you hope to find if you could take that journey? Thanks as always for watching today, and if you like our videos, please don't forget to click on the like button and comment in the comment section, and if you already haven't done so, why not subscribe, it is completely free.